And we start off with our first official match on the paper. What a banger of a match Dar this was. Darby Allen and MJF. This this was the best match out of both of them. Oh, by God, yes. A mile. Oh, God, yes. And for a while, it was my match of the night. It was. And it ran with it. It, be it became a really close number two for me, though. Yes. Um, just the story going into it, and they wrestled. Yes, like they too. did. It was just a wonderful, wonderful match. This is how you do it right here. And people give AEW a lot of flack, but when they have a good match, they have a good match. Uh, right. It was a di it was the diamond ring shot to Darby Allen, then a side headlock takeover, which is what MJF said he was going to beat Darby Allen with. So great tie in there mm -hmm. for the win. So MJF won the match. Just awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. All right, Pina Gallery. I don't know how the fuck we're gonna do this, but we're gonna somehow figure this out. Let's make this shit majestic again with this one. I would not have changed a fucking goddamn thing. Nope. Again, first successful example of long-term storytelling. This is exactly what we needed. I probably would have wished that Kenny Omega wasn't as injured as he is, but hey. His, his, his work, he took a little too much yep. for his workload. He has no one to blame but himself for it. Hopefully, he gets the healing, and hopefully, we maybe we can see a rematch. Yep. We most likely will. Yep. So let's talk about inner. Now I love the build up. To the build up this. to this big great. Uh, the match itself eh, it, it went about as I expected. I, I think the right person won, or yeah. I think the right person ate the pin. Yeah, but it went about how I expected it to go. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy match. I didn't have the highest expectations. For I probably, it. I probably would have switched the false count anywhere in this match within the card, and it probably would have been a little more impactful yeah. for me. Personally, I like I do I like the touches they did with the Minnesota-based inventions that they. Yes, so that was another thing that we didn't even talk about was they had a bunch of different Minnesota-based inventions. Right, that like were a weapons. toaster, like the toaster was invented in Minneapolis. Hockey stick, hockey is a big part of Minnesota culture. Uh, you got let's see what else, um, oil barrels, big part of Minnesota culture. You got, you know, they just did those little tiny things that just made it's, it's sense. Something, it's something that AEW is really good at. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great attention to detail. Also, I, I know that Dan Lambert is not a wrestler, and he did not take a lot of bumps, but man, you can tell that this guy has a lot of great passion for this business. Oh yeah, and he's such a great talker. And I loved it that he was in this match. Mm -hmm. He just kind of looked ridiculous looking yeah. like a blueberry. But that's fine. I wouldn't have booked this any different. I probably would have started this program earlier yeah. um, to really hit home about it. But yep. I feel like they did this one right. Yeah. Maybe have this one in ODQ or something like that. And maybe not a pinfall. I probably would have done like Eddie Kingston couldn't continue or right, something or something like to, that something to, to make him look strong right well he still looked strong in defeat but i feel like if he was like technical knocked out like he passed out or um he couldn't fight anymore right that probably would have been a lot better than just your standard pinfall yeah but that's really about so replace it. the finish replace the miro once, danielson once, finish with this and right. switch them around right once again it's one of those things where the marring of full gear this year was weird Weird finishes. Mm -hmm. Um, <sighs> Ty Conti, she needs a little more work. This this should have been a clean, no ambiguous pinfall. Yes, it should have or, been. Or a submission or a pass out. If you did a pass out here, I would have been okay with it too. Yeah. Um, but this whole kick out of the last second, that's Hulk Hogan shit. What are you doing oh, yeah. here? That This is kind of, that's amateur hour wrestling. Right. Like, what are you doing? And also, don't have Britt Baker kick out of the three big finishes that Ty Conti uses. Right. It almost makes Ty Conti look weak. Yeah, look so, like an amateur. Right. It's like, why is she here? Why was she going for the title? Okay, yeah, she won a bunch of matches. And right. she hit big three big finishes, and she couldn't get the right. fucking job done. Right, she couldn't get the job done. Right, that's what I think. I, I didn't think that Britt Baker looked strong. She doesn't have to look any stronger. She's right. Britt Baker. Like, come on. Uh... <sighs> Just this match needed to just not exist. It was yeah. it was really weird. It was kind of put. To, I felt like it was put together at the last minute. I understand the rivalry. It with, should it should not have been here. I'm sorry. I, it just this shouldn't, shouldn't have been, been here. No, it made no sense. Yeah, it, it started really quick and it felt like there was no reason for it. Um, <sighs> Cody Rose just needs to be a heel and just get on with it. Mm-hmm. 
Jesus. And I feel like the wrong, the wrong people won. Yeah. That's honestly. Totally Legitimately, this just didn't make any sense to me. I did not like it whatsoever. Right. Once again, we would have switched the two, but booking-wise, I probably wouldn't have done anything different because no. um, people love this match. Oh, yeah. So um, I liked it. I thought it was the right stipulation for the right time. Yeah. Just the policeman on the card was yeah. not the right And I felt like Storyline was a little rushed, too. Well, this one, uh, yeah, you know, maybe maybe not as rushed, but it's still, you know, it, it felt incomplete without Kenny Omega being there. I can see that. I could totally it, it see that. It felt a little incomplete. Right. Well, because he was involved with he was them involved, anyway. Right. So there was no reason for this. Right. Um, Miro and Danielson. Again, I'm, I'm, there should have been a clean pinfall just so we knew who, you know, just so we had the a definitive, definitive win. Winner. I don't like this because now we're most likely going to see a triple threat um, with Miro. And it's like, okay, I understand that they had to put somebody here because Moxley is. Um, in rehab, right. I understand that this was a last minute decision, and I think same, that's and I think that kind of martyred a little bit too. Right, Miro cannot lose right now; he's too strong. Right. And if they were going to do this, have Miro win. Right. So, yeah, there we go. Um, once again, it's just the finish. The booking was done just right yeah. for this entire and, thing. And I like how it's now involving Triple A as well. And, and it, it, there's a lot of great, a lot of great crossover. Yeah. But the finish, uh, they they did not put those masks on very well. It was very poorly done. Yeah, it was poorly done. The mask didn't make sense because it was one of the participants in the match. Right. And it's like, okay, if this if, is this Lucha rules? Is it not? Because we were seeing right. a lot of people pin other people. And I'm like, okay, who's the legal person? Right. And all of a sudden, oh, the legalization there is right. Okay, well, you, you, you got to say yes or no to that thing. Like, right. it doesn't make sense to me. So, other than the ending, I probably wouldn't have done anything different. No. I like that FTR beat them for the Triple A World Tag Team Champions, and I'm excited for the Triple A match. Right. Um, in December, I wouldn't have done anything different. No, this match was done. Not well. a damn thing different. It was way too good it to was. do anything different. Maybe a different placement on the card, but I did not expect them. I mean. I, I hate saying this, but I did not expect them to do that well. That was <laughs> that was magic. Yes, two of the four pillows of AEW. Did somebody say that? Yeah, Jr. said that. He said two oh. of the four pillows <laughs> instead of pillars, pillows. Yeah, it's uh, it's Egyptian down. <laughs> and then this one, it was a buy-in. It was a tag team match to fill it. There was not really much I would have done different. All right, so Pina Gallery. What are we doing next? Well, let's see. Next week, we got yes. Survivor Series, I believe. No, next week is Turning Point. No, I think both of them are. Yeah, it's Turning Point and Survivor Series. Oh, shit. It's going to be a really busy weekend. <laughs> All right, so we have a very... It's it's probably not going to be a wrestling lesson and a and, heckling. Nope. But because we got two separate brands going, but... And also, we're going to one of them live, so that's going to eat up a lot of our time for right. the day. So um, we'll probably not do that, but we'll be covering both of those. Uh, if you did enjoy this, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, um, wherever you're listening to this on, we're on all major platforms, YouTube, iTunes, everything, become a patron. Right. We might start watching some of these series and start releasing like a little review series or a watch along or something like that. So if you're interested, um, go to the Patreon and check it out. But as always, be majestic.